Hello, my name is Andrew Collins and I'm a telly addict. Do you want to see something really scary? And Nigel Farage joins me now from Kent. No, scarier than that. Pretty devastating return to BBC One for Luther. Oh, sorry, good. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was a time when British cop shows showed all sorts of crimes, but this millennium they won't get their notebooks out for anything less than a serial killer. For this four episode series arc, it's a nutter who hides in your house. This is the most frightening thing I've seen on telly this year. Somebody called DCI Luther. I don't care if he's busy investigating the inside of his soul in a moody rain lashed pop video. Only Luther's planet-sized deductive brain can catch TV's latest obsessive compulsive extrovert copycat body jockey for whom simply killing women is not enough. Look, it's a very specific look. The wig, the makeup, it's a bit of a Susie and the Banshees thing going on here. Who in the what? 80s, post, punk. Not only is Luther clever, he knows his tribal subgenres. As played by the statuesque Idris Elba, whose hulking corporeal screen presence also solves the BBC's current headache about whether to invest in 3D TV, no need, Luther is Morse decoded. Smart, but can't say the word something. Yeah, don't rule out anything. You know what? The mask, the wigs, I think it's part of something else, you know, trying to recreate something. Police work's most troubled genius is too busy tearing up the rule book to worry about the th sound. All right, how far back are we looking? 1979 or something. Oi. Everybody loved Idris Elba as Stringer Bell in The Wire, but not so much as Luther in Luther. After a shaky start, I must say I've learned to. Especially as he seems to remember which side of the Atlantic he's working on now. Remember how he pronounced address in series two? Benny, you got that address. Like The Fall, this is not a whodunit, as we discover the identity of the serial killer up front. Here he is. Although unlike The Fall, he's not leading a double life as a nice family man. He lives in the standard grotty, untidy serial killer's flat that's wallpapered with unsettling photos. Right, hands over eyes again, please. That bloke was making it impossible for the police to take his fingerprints. Hasn't he heard of the simple, and now, if you'll excuse me, inspector, that they use on Lewis? Excuse me, no, sorry. I'm going to have to take this. Neil Cross, who created Luther, has also written every single episode, and I find that sort of authorship bracing, especially in a genre so often chopped up and farmed out. Talking of chopped up, is it just me, or is television generally getting scarier? We've currently got this on Channel 4. And this has just transferred from Fox to Channel 5. Come on! Come on! Come on! Shall we move on to something a little less sticking a pole through a zombie's head? On your feet! Hooray! It's Greg McHugh. Yes, I'm returning to Dates on Channel 4, which continued to charm and beguile right the way up to its ninth 30 minute meal. But this episode, Erica and Callum, was my favourite. OK, this is going to be quick and it's not going to be repeated, so listen up. I'll have a bowl of the wonton soup, the Singapore vermicelli noodles, half peking duck with pancakes, hargao, char sal and the wasabi chicken dim sum. OK, uh, for you? Aye, she'll have the hot and sour soup, chicken stir fry and the grilled pork dumplings. OK, and to drink? Two sing tao. Now you know the drill, so listen up. Don't want the food sitting about in the kitchen getting cold, so as and when, bring it, OK? OK. On the spectrum of McHugh's repertoire, Callum was closer to Howard from Fresh Meat than the titular character in his own sitcom, Gary Tank Commander. A sore thumb among the series' more conventionally attractive singletons, but in many ways, the most attractive of all. I get it. You're going, because uh, apparently five minutes is long enough to compile a complete assessment of my personality and you don't like what you're seeing. No, Callum, it's not that. I mean, I know I'm no Hugh Grant, but... I thought you'd see past that. Erica, well played by Gemma Chan, had been in a previous date with a woman, Katie McGrath. And it was this type of narrative continuity that linked what were otherwise standalone plays for today. Oh, and although Callum did crack, at least he didn't turn out to be a serial killer. I may be an arrogant Scottish twat, but at least I've got my self-respect. 
Dates was created by the very clever Brian Elsley, dad of that episode's writer, Jamie Britton. Between them, they created Skins, a long-running series for the Ute, which helped define E4. Like Dexter, which I'll catch up with next week as I fulfilled my serial killer quota for this week, it's back for a final series. There's no shame in me admitting I watched the first ever episode of Skins in January 2007, admired it, identified not with the kids but with the dad whose car is driven into the harbour, and vowed never to watch it again. Well, we're all six years older now, so what's changed? Hmm, not much by the looks of it. Hey, where have you been? Working. That's the twist in this trio of valedictory two-parters, each one revisiting a key skin from the first three series. Cassie, Cook and Effie, played with natural grace by the now ancient Kayaska Daliero, who's got a 22 grand job in the city. It's all right. Actually, Effie's is the only job at a firm of high-rise hedge fund managers that I could actually understand. It involves photocopying and handing things out, folding things and putting them in envelopes. I'm making two teas, one with lemon, six coffees, four with no sugar, two skinny. I found all this instantly compelling and gorgeously shot by Charles Martin. And guess what? It's written by Jess Britton, who's the sister of Jamie Britton and daughter of Brian Elsley. What must Christmas be like round their house? The whole family pacing up and down, talking into dictaphones, pulling their hair out, asking what's another word for ennui? Anyway, back to the action. Effie's life is about to change, although not as much as our image of Caban Novak after his gentle idiots in Four Lions and Sirens. You want me to be a trader? I'm giving you the chance to trade for one client. Yes or no? At which point, we were plunged with the smarter than the average TV critic Effie into the magical world of whatever goes on in the city. Falling. After which, it was science fiction. But, you know, I loved Battlestar Galactica and I had no idea what they were doing a lot of the time on the bridge either. I didn't expect to find myself hooked on skins at my time of life, but thanks to a more reflective approach earned by all the work put in since 2007, I have. Talking of joining a drama too late... I missed the first season of political crisis management procedural come potboiler scandal from Grey's Anatomy architect Shonda Rhimes, which airs on ABC over there and more for over here. But having recently lost The Good Wife and Nashville, I was keen to fill the hungry gap. Unfortunately, season two didn't make it easy for newcomers. I should interject here and say that this isn't me fast forwarding through the previously on, this is them showing off. Now pay attention. How could they think I built a bomb? You know me, I can't operate the cappuccino machine. Focus, Quinn, tell us what you know. Yes, please do, whoever you are and whoever the woman is who's asking you. She'd been dating Jesse six months. Jesse banged Elaine, a programmer who worked two cubicles over at Cytron. Quinn, sorry, Lindsay Dwyer, saw a text on his phone that read, and I quote, you wore me out to think you broke my bed. I flatter myself that I'm not a complete idiot, but the opening moments of Scandal made me feel like one. It's set in DC, Kerry Washington from Django Unchained is some kind of private sector spin doctress, but beyond that, out of his clear as day. So let's poke holes in this thing. It's all circumstantial. There's no signature or receipt proving it was Quinn who dropped off that package. No prints on any of the bomb components. Your Honor, the defense would like to make a motion to dismiss the indictment for insufficient circumstantial evidence. Is it the West Wing? Boston legal? House of lies? I'm man enough to admit I didn't have a clue what was going on. Look, I can stomp on the evidence until I'm blue in the face. And when everybody's talking Aaron Sorkin fast, it may as well be in Chinese. I'm sure you'll all tell me to watch the previous episodes and get with the programme, but life's too short. If they can't extend a warmer welcome than that, they don't deserve me. Now, let's slow down to a crawl. This timing. They give us these timing sheets from one end to the other. How are we supposed to get there in them times? I was delighted to see London bus driver Sajad Sharif return in last week's Root Masters on BBC Two. He just makes everything better. The control is a... What's going on with you down here, driver? Well, where are you? Where are you? I'm in the bus. Where's the bus? The bus is in the room! But for your moment of zen, and with the killer on Luther still probably lurking in your loft, we could do with one, I give you Patrick, a bus mechanic whose attitude to work might inspire us all. Or something. I, I love this job. I, I, I really, really do. I, I tell you, when the night comes, i just looking forward for the next day to come to go to work, to repair vehicles. Uh, I, just, I just love it.